onto the 08 Honda 600 uh, uh, fully adjustable chassis. Forks are preload, rebound, and compression. And in the shock, we have the same preload, rebound, and compression. We don't have any ride height adjustability in the back, and we don't have any high speed compression. One thing to note on this particular bike is that mechanical bottom out, if you're using a zip tie to judge your travel on the forks, is 25 millimeters up from the axle casting. So you need to put a sharpie dot there so you know as your zip tie progresses through the travel that you don't bottom out and as a result crash. One other feature of the front forks is a so-called anti-dive where the oil pressure builds up in the fork and it tr takes a tremendous amount of force to get that to go from 45 millimeters up from the axle casting to mechanical bottom. Now normally we drill a bleed hole in the cartridge itself to fix that problem so the forks are much more fluid and a lot more comfortable for the street. So bear that in mind. Okay, now with Dave on the bike, 180 pounds. We're going from the axle housing here to the bottom of this bungee cord strap. With Dave on the bike, it's 35 millimeters. So that's perfect for street use at 180 pounds. Now in the front, we know extended it's 140 millimeters. And with Dave on the bike, he's at 30 millimeters in the front. Now given that we're losing 25 millimeters of travel, and then you're effectively losing another 25 on top of that, or 20 millimeters. If we subtract that, we can see that the front end's rigid. So, modifying the front forks is essential. Changing the fork springs in the front of this bike, if you're this weight, is also essential, but the back of the bike will work perfectly. 240 pounds. Of course, it's right at 40 millimeters of sag. So the shock is definitely too soft in terms of springing. So you'd want to respring the shock with a stiffer spring. Remember, in this instance, when you get past 35, 40 millimeters of sag, the back of the bike is collapsing and causing the front to extend. So until you fix that problem, you're really never going to truly get an accurate measurement. So if you're buying this bike, you're this heavy, the weight of the bike is towards the rear of the bike with very little weight on the front end. That's a huge safety problem. Now with Chris on the bike, he has exactly the same sag as Dave did, but there's a 40 pound weight differential because the back of the bike has collapsed. So until that's corrected, we can't go ahead and accurately measure the front because the attitude of the bike is all choppered out. Now with Lisa on the bike, Madame, and 140. We've got 23 millimeters of sag, so this spring is marginal if you're in this weight category. Certainly if you're less than 140 pounds, you're gonna to have to respring the back of the bike. And in the front, Lisa has 20 millimeters of sag. So obviously, this bike is, is definitely completely mismatched front to back with springs and spring rates. So if you're in this weight category, you've got to do some very significant work to the front, but in the back, just swap the spring out.